Ah, picture this, the year is 1958, a time when the silver screen was graced by a tale that would etch itself into the annals of cinematic history. Imagine sitting in a dimly lit theater, the anticipation palpable as the opening credits roll. And then, there it is, the enigmatic allure of the old man in the sea. Can you recall that initial encounter, the way the story unfolded before your eyes, like the unfurling waves of the vast ocean? Perhaps you found yourself lost in the rugged determination of Santiago, that aging fisherman whose battle against the indomitable Marlin felt like a metaphor for life itself. As the scenes played out, did you perch on the edge of your seat, mirroring Santiago's taut line, feeling the strain of his struggle? Or did you find solace in the quiet moments, where the old man's introspection mirrored your own? This cinematic masterpiece, directed by John Sturges, cast a spell that transcended time, beckoning us to grapple with themes of perseverance, resilience, and the profound connection between man and nature. Now, let's peel back the curtain and dive into some lesser-known tidbits about this iconic film. Did you know that Spencer Tracy's portrayal of Santiago earned him an Oscar nomination? The artistry of the cinematography, capturing both the grandeur and intimacy of the story, is a testament to the film's enduring allure. And speaking of allure, the film's score, composed by Dmitry Tiankin, interweaves seamlessly with Santiago's journey, carrying us through highs and lows with each crescendo. So, let's embark on a journey of discovery, exploring intriguing facts that add new dimensions to your perception of the old man and the sea. From behind-the-scenes anecdotes to the film's impact on popular culture, well uncover the layers that make this classic a timeless treasure. Get ready to unravel the threads that connect us to Santiago's voyage, for every moment shared with this tale is a voyage of its own. And remember, just as Santiago ventured into the deep to conquer the Marlin, so too shall we delve into the depths of this narrative. The 1958 film The Old Man and the Sea, directed by John Sturges, is an adaptation of Ernest Hemingway's novella of the same name. Set in the backdrop of Cuba, the story follows Santiago, an aging and determined fisherman who embarks on a solo expedition to catch a giant marlin. The film beautifully captures Santiago's struggle against the forces of nature and his battle with the marlin, showcasing his resilience and inner strength. Spencer Tracy's portrayal of Santiago breathes life into the iconic character, evoking his loneliness and unwavering spirit. The film's unique style lies in its emphasis on symbolism and introspection, exploring Santiago's connection to the sea as a metaphor for life's challenges and triumphs. The rugged visuals of the sea's vastness and Santiago's relentless perseverance highlight the human spirit's resilience against adversity. The film's meditative pace allows viewers to immerse themselves in Santiago's thoughts and emotions, creating a poignant cinematic experience. The Old Man and the Sea left an enduring impact on popular culture by preserving Hemingway's timeless tale on the silver screen. The character of Santiago has become a symbol of endurance and the human pursuit of greatness, resonating with audiences across generations. The film's exploration of existential themes and its portrayal of the relationship between humans and nature continue to captivate and inspire. Through its masterful storytelling and compelling performances, The Old Man and the Sea remains a cinematic treasure, inviting viewers to reflect on the essence of the human spirit and its indomitable will to overcome challenges. In summary, the 1958 film adaptation of The Old Man and the Sea by John Sturges brings Ernest Hemingway Hemingway's classic novella to life through its iconic characters. Unique style and profound impact on popular culture, capturing the essence of human resilience and the timeless struggle against adversity on the open sea. Ernest Hemingway's literary masterpiece, The Old Man and the Sea, found its cinematic adaptation in 1958, but the journey to the silver screen was not without its share of twists and turns. A tale of resilience and the undying human spirit, the film starred the iconic Spencer Tracy as Santiago, the aging Cuban fisherman determined to prove his mettle against the relentless sea. Interestingly, the role of Santiago almost went to Anthony Quinn, as director John Sturges initially favored him. However, studio heavyweights Jack Warner and Leland Hayward insisted on casting Tracy due to his substantial star power. Quinn's chance to embody Santiago eventually came in 1990 when he portrayed the character in a made-for-television movie. The film's intrigue extended beyond the camera, even into its final scene. In a captivating detail, Ernest Hemingway himself made an unexpected appearance. In the closing moments of the film, eagle-eyed viewers can spot Hemingway sitting in a cafe, donning a tan baseball cap and engaging in conversation with other fishermen. This unassuming cameo marked the legend author's debut in the world of cinema. Notably, the connection between the film and Hollywood royalty Humphrey Bogart adds another layer of history. In 1952, Bogart, deeply moved by the story's portrayal of an aging hero, sought to bring Santiago to life through his production company, Santana Productions. He envisioned himself as the titular character, with director Nicholas Ray at the helm. Alas, Bogart's efforts to secure the film rights were in vain, and the project lay dormant until after his passing. The role eventually found its way to Tracy, a close friend of Bogart's, paying a poignant tribute to a missed opportunity. The Old Man in the Sea may have taken its time to reach the cinema, but its impact endures. The convergence of artistry, star power, and behind-the-scenes tales creates a narrative as captivating as the story it sought to tell. 
In the grand tapestry of film history, The Old Man and the Sea remains a testament to the intricate dance of creative vision, industry power plays, and the relentless pursuit of bringing a literary classic to life on celluloid. Ernest Hemingway's involvement in the 1958 film adaptation of his novella The Old Man and the Sea had its quirks. Although he sold the film rights to Warner Bros., he initially ventured into the movie's production. Hemingway set off on a marlin fishing expedition along Peru's coast, aiming to capture a fish suitable for the film. Curiously, the actual filming used a rubber marlin and stock footage, excluding Hemingway's participation. The film's portrayal left him disappointed. He remarked that Spencer Tracy, cast as a Cuban peasant fisherman, bore less resemblance to his envisioned character and more to a well-off actor. Surprisingly, despite Hemingway's disappointment, Spencer Tracy's performance earned him an Oscar nomination. However, Tracy defied expectations even before the camera rolled. Asked to shed weight for his role, he chose to keep his frame as it was. The old man's struggle may have been a reflection of Tracy's own resistance to conforming to Hollywood's demands. Adding a touch of intimacy to the production, Mary Hemingway, Ernest's fourth wife and eventual widow, made an appearance as a blonde tourist. She graced the screen as the film neared its conclusion, wordlessly crossing a street and taking a seat at a cafe. While her role lacked lines, it subtly tied the Hemingway legacy to the film's narrative. In the end, The Old Man and the Sea brought forth a mix of Hemingway's initial involvement, Tracy's unyielding stance, and a familial cameo. The film's complex web of connections and contrasts between creator and adaptation provides a glimpse into the multifaceted world of cinema making, a realm where artistic vision and commercial interests often collide. Bogart's bid and Tracy's triumph, the saga of The Old Man and the Sea's casting in the annals of Hollywood lore, the tale of The Old Man and the Sea carries its own share of drama, off-screen and on. Ernest Hemingway's iconic novella found itself in a tug of war for the silver screen, with none other than Humphrey Bogart at the helm of Santana Productions, yearning to portray the titular old man. Back in 1952, Bogart ardently sought the film rights, captivated by the character's spirit, but destiny had other plans. Bogart's aspirations hit a snag, the coveted rights slipped through his grasp like sand. Despite his fervent hopes, the adaptation didn't materialize during his lifetime. Instead, the sea's waves would beckon another luminary, Spencer Tracy. A close confidante of Bogart, Tracy stepped into the old man's shoes, bringing Hemingway's protagonist to life in 1958, a year after Bogart's passing. Yet, intrigue laced the casting choices. Anthony Quinn, recounting the tale, revealed that John Sturges, the director, favored Quinn to embrace Santiago's role. But the tides of stardom and studio politics swept in a different direction. Jack Warner and Leland Hayward, wielding their influence, championed Tracy's star power over Quinn's potential. The die was cast, and Spencer Tracy became Santiago, etching his performance into cinematic history. The tapestry of fate would weave another thread for Quinn. Decades later, in 1990, Head finally seized the coveted role, albeit on the small screen, in a made-for-television adaptation. The narrative had come full circle, tracing the contours of Hollywood's intricate machinations and serendipitous turns. In the ever-rolling waves of show business, The Old Man and the Sea stands as a testament to the capricious currents of casting choices, the ebb and flow of ambition, and the indelible mark of friendship that transcends time. From Bogart's earnest endeavor to Tracy's triumphant portrayal, this tale reminds us that even in the vast expanse of the cinematic sea, the human spirit navigates its own course, leaving ripples that endure on both screen and shore. As we bid adieu to the world of the old man and the sea, we find ourselves parting ways with more than just a movie. We ventured alongside Santiago on his poignant odyssey, feeling the ebb and flow of his determination and the vastness of his solitude. The subtle brush strokes of the 1958 cinematic masterpiece have left indelible marks upon the canvas of our hearts. As the curtains close on this timeless tale, let its waves continue to ripple through your thoughts. Recall the moments that stirred your spirit, Santiago's weathered hands grappling with destiny, the endless expanse of the sea mirroring the depths of his perseverance, and the unbreakable bond between man and nature. Perhaps it's the echoes of his resilience that resonate with your own journey, the trials and triumphs that define your own narrative. But now, it's your turn. Share with us the fragments of the film that have carved a special sanctuary within your soul. What memories do you hold dear? What reflections have you unlocked? Let us journey together through the realms of interpretation and emotion as we unravel the threads that tie us to this cinematic treasure. Thank you for treading these waters of reminiscence with us. Your time and curiosity are cherished gifts that continue to inspire our exploration of the human experience. Until we set sail on another narrative escapade, remember that the heart of the old man and the sea beats not just in its celluloid frames, but in the cadence of your thoughts and the tapestry of your own story.